Good day! My name is Raquel Bihatulan, a first-year student nurse at Davao Doctors College. In this video, I will show you the complete bed bath or the bed bathing of an adult patient. The first thing that I would do is wash my hands and provide privacy for my patient. Performing hand hygiene is important because this helps to prevent the spreading of germs and cross-contamination. Also, I will provide privacy for my patient so that she will feel comfortable and protected during our procedure. The second thing that I would do is identify, explain, and assess my patient. Um, good morning, ma'am. My name is Raquel Bihutilan, a first year student nurse at Tabo Doctors College. Um, before we proceed to anything else, I would just like to confirm your identity so that I know that I have the right patient today. Can you please tell me your name, your birthday, and your age? Michelle Bunkaya, December 13, 1971, 49 years old. Okay. So, ma'am, um, I will perform the complete bath of an adult patient today, so I will do that to you. Um, bed bathing is actually a form of hygienic care and also patient care. So what we are going to do here is that I am going to clean your skin, I'm going to wash your skin, and also um, we do this to prevent infection from your skin and also to make sure that your skin will remain clean. Okay? Okay, so I will assess just to see if there is any discomfort with your skin or if there is any itchiness. Is there something that is bothering you or is there itchiness with your skin? Mm -hmm. The third thing that I would do is offer the bedpan or the urinal to my patient and ask her to void. Um, Mom, would you like to use the urinal before we do the procedure so that we can urinate? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now have the necessary equipment for bathing and I'm wearing the correct PPE for this which is the gloves so the glove will help me protect myself from body fluids or blood if there is any. Um, so my equipment here as you can see I have gloves, comb, have the deodorant, we're gonna put this um, once we finish washing the patient. Also I have soap, I don't really have a soap dish because the soap has already a bottle with it. Also lotion for moisturizing the foot of the patient. I also have uh, shaving equipment. I also have the basin. It has already water in it. The water's temperature is between 43 degrees Celsius to 46 degrees Celsius. I have my laundry bag, so assuming that this is a laundry bag. And I have several face towels here that will be used in washing your patient. I also have a clean patient gown. This is the bed, um, the bath blanket. These two are the towels. Also, I have this table. For, that will be used for washing later. This is where I'm gonna put all of the equipment that I will need for washing. That this is a hospital bed. So I am going to raise the bed to a convenient height and also I will lower down the side rails near the nurse. We do this to avoid undue reaching. Okay, so assuming that I can lower this down. Also, assuming that this has a bigger space, I am going to move the patient, assist the patient to move to the side. What I am going to do now is place the bath blanket to my patient and remove the top sheet and place it here on the hamper. Now we are moving the top sheet to the hamper. So we use the bed bath because this provides comfort and protection to our patient. Now it's time for me to remove the patient's gown. Assuming that my patient has an intravenous line connected to her right hand, I am going to remove the patient's gown on the unaffected area first. Okay? So So assuming that we have 
The basin that I will use for the washing of my patient is now filled with two-thirds of water. So the temperature of water is within 43 degrees to 46 degrees Celsius. But before that, before I'm going to use this, I have to make sure that my patient is going to check it first so that uh, I will know if it is suitable for her or not. Okay, ma'am, can you please check if is this Now I'm going to remove the patient's pillow and raise the bed to 30 to 45 degrees. Also, I am going to place towels under uh, one towel under the head of my patient, and the, another, the other towel will be placed on her chest. Now it's time to wash the face of my client. For now, I'm only going to use um, water to wash the eye of my client. I'm going to form a mist. So upon washing the eyes, I will start to the inner canthus to the outer canthus. Also, you will observe that um, I will use different corners of the face towel in washing the eye of my patient. We are going to do this to avoid the transfer of microorganisms from one eye to another. So you just have to wash it gently. So for the other eye, we're going to use this corner. So we are going to proceed next to the face, ears, and the neck. But before that, I'm going to ask Nadesha for if she would like a soap to be used in washing her face. Okay, now would you like to use soap when you wash your face? Mm -hmm. okay. So the patient said no. Now we move on to the neck. As you can see, my patient here is female. So I am not going to ask her anymore if she would like her face to be shaved or not. But if my patient is male, I would have to ask him if he wants his face to be shaved or not. Because you know that um, males have different facial hair compared to females. So this is for our unconscious patient. In washing the eyes, it is just the same with the conscious patient. Um, so we will start from the inner canthus to the outer canthus. 
and another corner will be used for the other eye. So I have used this corner for the right eye and now I'm going to use this corner for the left eye. So if prescribed, um, instill eye drop or ointment. But in my patient's case, um, there is no prescribed ointment or eye drop. If there is no blink reflex, just keep the eyelids closed. So for my patient, there is no blink reflex, so just I'll keep her eyelids closed. I'm going to close the eyelids gently and apply an eye patch. The next thing that we are going to wash is the arm and the axillary. So, for this, we are going to expose the right arm first. And we're gonna have to place the towel under the right arm in a lengthwise manner. Since we're done with the arm and the auxiliary, we're going to proceed with the hands and the knees. So this, it's just the same procedure. We're going to wash, um, soak, and rinse, and, all, and after all of those three, we're going to dry it. So since we're done with the right arm and the right hand, we are going to transfer to the other hand and arm and do the same procedure the same way that we did on this side.
And now we are done with the arms, actually, hands, and knees. Here, now we're going to proceed to the chest and the abdomen area. So what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to put the towel across the chest and the abdomen area of my patient. I will lower down the back blanket up to the umbilical area. So we do this to still protect the to give privacy to our patient so that her private area and the chest part will not be exposed. So I'm going to pull down the towel in the chest area a bit to clean her chest and the and next thing is that I'm going to clean also the abdomen part. My patient is female. So I'm gonna put more attention to her skin folds, especially the skin under her breast. After the part, I have to check if my water needs to be changed already or not. So, in the case of my water, it's still suitable in cleaning the patient. Um, so, I don't need to change my water just yet. We are done with the chest and the abdomen. I'm going to drape the towel and the bed bath to the patient's chest. So, we're actually doing it this way so that we will still provide privacy for our patient when we remove the towel under the bed bath. Now we are going to proceed to the leg of the patient. We're going to start here to the left side. So we are going to expose the left leg and put the bed blanket under the other leg. So now we have exposed the left leg. Be sure to cover the perineum area. We do this to protect the privacy and the dignity of our patient. So I'm gonna put my towel under the patient's leg in a lengthwise manner. So now we are going to wash, rinse, and dry the left leg. So we are going to start from the distal to the proximal area because this promotes circulation by stimulating the venous blood flow. Now that we're done with the legs, we're now going to proceed to the foot. We're also going to wash, rinse, and dry it. So since we have dried the foot thoroughly, it's time to put lotion to the foot to provide moisture. Okay. Now it's time for us to do the same thing to the other foot. We're just going to reverse the coverings and repeat the same procedure to the other leg. Of course, we have to expose the right leg but be sure to cover the terminal area. Put the towel under the leg in a lengthwise manner.
So the next part that we're going to wash is the food. We're also just going to wash it, rinse and dry. Lotion to provide moisture. So now we are done with the foot and the leg area. Now we jump into another procedure. This time I'm going to wash to discard the washcloth that I used during the first procedures. I still have to maintain my patient's privacy. I'm also going to change the water. I have now filled the basin with two-thirds of water. Also, the temperature for this one is is 43 to 46 degrees Celsius. But, be, but before that, I have to ask my patient if the temperature is fine with her. What I'm going to do next is the perineal care, which is very necessary. So now I have to change my gloves. So I am going to change my gloves to ensure that the gloves, the new gloves that I will be using is not yet contaminated with other fluids or microorganisms from other body parts. Now we are going to perform the perineal care. So I am using a different gloves and a different washcloth for this one. Perineal care is done, so now I have to dispose this washcloth, dispose the glove that I'm using and change to another one, and then change my water again. I now have changed the water in the basin, and the temperature is still 43 to 46 degrees Celsius, and also I have changed into a new pair of gloves. Now we proceed to washing the back of our patient. For this one, I have to lower the head part of the bed of the patient, and also I'll bring back her pillow. After that, I'm going to assist her to face in a side-lying position that is facing away from me. The bath towel will be placed alongside her back in a lengthwise manner, so we are going to do this to provide warm and undue exposure. Assuming that my patient is not wearing any underwear right now and is butt naked. So now we are going to wash and dry the client's back and then move to the buttocks. So, assuming that my patient is butt naked right now, I am going to wash the gluteal folds.
So for example, I watch, I'm watching it here, assuming that I'm was watching it. So next thing I do is rinse it. Especially the gluteal folds. Now we are going to dry it. Since my patient's skin is actually intact, I am now going to remove my gloves. I am now going to perform a back massage for my patient. Since we are done with washing the body parts, we are now going to help the patient to wear a new gown. So before putting the gown, you have to be sure to check the intravenous line that is connected to her. We are going to start with the hand that has an intravenous line. We do this so that her hand won't be harmed. I'm going to transfer to the other side. Now we are going to comb the patient's hair properly. Assuming that we have our signal device here, we're going to place it near the patient and do the aftercare for the equipment. After doing the aftercare of the medical equipment, I have to perform hand hygiene to prevent the contamination of germs. I am now done with the bed bathing procedure. So now I am just going to perform documentation. So I am going to put here the observations that I have seen during the bed bathing procedure. Also, I will report for any pertinent observations.